Hello, my name is Len Chamberlain, and I am getting an echo. <laughs> so, um, I am the VP of Worldwide Sales for Geomagic Solutions Group within 3D Systems. Um, myself and my colleagues are here today to introduce you to Geomagic Capture. It is a it is a new suite of solutions from Geomagic Solutions. Uh, that includes both scan-based design and scan-based inspection. Uh, today, we will go be covering specifically uh, Geomagic Capture for SolidWorks, which includes uh, the hardware, the scanning device, as well as a plug-in for SolidWorks. Geomagic Capture has uh, really struck a chord with our both our resellers and our user base um, for many years. Uh, both Geomagic and RapidForm uh, were companies that, that were recently acquired by 3D Systems. We've always sold standalone applications that, that do either reverse engineering or inspection. Um, and and uh, for a long period of time, there were requests to have our technology placed inside more familiar environments. Um, something like a SOLIDWORKS or, or other CAD-based systems. Um, Geomagic, with the advent of Geomagic Capture, we've released uh, a SOLIDWORKS plugin that allows you to scan directly within SOLIDWORKS, um, manipulate that data, um, and, and do a, a scan-based design process with tools um, that you're already familiar with. Um, the, the response to this particular system has been uh, amazing, um, really better than we had expected. Um, and it is clear that we've really reached a tipping point relative to performance and price and ease of use. And uh, I really hope that you're as excited about it as we are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a little bit of the, of the business case and some of the features and benefits of the system. And then I will turn it over to my colleague Greg George, who will give you a live demonstration of the of the of capture for SolidWorks. So, as part of our as part of our vision of reimagining the engineer's desktop, um, we're releasing the the capture system. Pardon me, the capture system. You'll hear us talk a lot about scan-based design. We're, we're trying to broaden our markets beyond the, the typical re reverse engineering realm. Um, we believe that this system is easy enough to use, uh, uh, low enough price such that a wider audience, a wider percentage of the designers out there can now start using physical objects and using scan data for their designs rather than, rather than starting from a blank screen. Um, this allows them to utilize more complex, more organic shapes in their design process. So, whereas, you know, whereas creating a very nice organic shape in SolidWorks from scratch may be difficult with lofts and suites, etc., uh, by using a scan-based design process, you can take that complexity from an existing shape or a hand-sculpted shape or a, a legacy product and use that in your design process to create a more uh, modern, more organic uh, design. Iteration, uh, iteration time on designs was a big focus, um, and this this really shows how this fits into the broader vision of of reimagining the engineer's desktop. But when you combine scan based design uh, with something like a rapid prototyping machine, we happen to sell a few uh, 3D printers, and also combine it use being able to do scan based inspection on a printed part you can very quickly uh, iterate on your design process and and create uh, more complex more organic more um, um, more functional designs in a in a faster period of time and again I, I'll hit hit on this a couple of times but um, Price and performance are very important when you're trying to create a new paradigm, but what's most important is that it's really easy to use. Um, the fact that we've now got a solution which will operate inside a CAD system with, it, with, 
which you're already familiar, uh, allows you um, allows you to pick this technology up very quickly. Uh, I think you'll see that the functionality that we've we've placed inside SolidWorks is pretty intuitive. Um, it allows you to manipulate scan data as you would pretty much every other object inside SolidWorks. Um, and so, so it's a, a new paradigm in terms of ease of use for scan-based design. All of this, and again, I, I apologize for the international attendees, but I'll, I'll be using, I'll be kind of using US dollar prices, but the, uh, the SolidWorks plugin, uh, the capture for SolidWorks starts at 14,900 in the US, um, and that's, that's for a, a license and the hardware. Um, if you compare that to what has been the typical 3D scanner paradigm, uh, we're, we're offering a fairly significant savings over uh, a, a traditional 3D scanner and an independent processing software. Um, so at, at 14.9, in many cases, you're getting a combined solution there for less than you would have paid for software only in the previous with previous systems. So to summarize, we, we've actually got a, a couple of different uh, options in terms of scan-based design. We will be showing you today Capture for SolidWorks, um, which allows you to, to scan directly within SolidWorks and model directly within SolidWorks and obviously create your, your parametric and history-based models there. We've also got a similar plugin for space claim. Um, both of those packages are available for 14.9, um, and and both of them include both the scanner and a license for the plugins to those to those packages. It does not, by the way, include the license for those packages themselves. So you need to own SolidWorks. And again, we've tested with 2014 and 2013, um, and you need to own SpaceClaim if you're going to buy these plugin packages. Um, for those of you that don't have SolidWorks or Space Claim, we offer two other alternatives. One is Capture for Design X, and that that is our traditional flagship RE product. It create it creates uh, or it has a live transfer between a number of the of the premier CAD applications, including Siemens, PTC, Autodesk, um, as well as SolidWorks. So if you're a customer, um, or if your application requires taking scan data to multiple platforms, or it's a, not a platform that we currently support with a plugin, uh, DesignX is the, is the best bet for you. Um, if you don't have a CAD system and you're looking to, to use a scan-based design workflow um, and you're just starting, you're a smaller, perhaps a smaller company, um, Geomagic Capture for Design Direct is an excellent choice. It, it not only supports the scan-based design process, but it includes basically a full uh, direct modeling CAD application, uh, handles assemblies, handles prints. Um, um, both, both the Design Direct and Design X packages start at 24.9 and again include the scanner as well as the application. Um, so we're going to focus today on the design aspects of, of Geomagic Capture, but um, once you've experienced that and once you're excited about that, the next question you're going to ask is, gosh, why can't I use this wonderful technology to inspect my parts after they're printed or my, my prototypes before I take them on to functional testing? And the answer is you certainly can. Um, Geomagic Capture can also be used for inspection. So once you've got the CAD model, you can take a scan of the physical part and, and then do a very quick comparison to that CAD model to tell if your physical part is within the specifications you set. Um, and again, just like, just like the design process, the, the key here is price, performance, and ease of use. Um, and so the capture device is, uh, is good to about a 100 micron accuracy. Um, and it is about three tenths of a second per scan, so it is accurate and fast in terms of picking up the data from the part. Uh, we've used 
the basically the state of the art in 3D scanning right now, which is blue light LEDs. Um, you will see in subsequent uh, webinars that we will give the the ability that we have to automate this inspection process to really make it simple and easy to use. And again, here a complete system including the scanner. Uh, so if you just wanted to do inspection and, and with a scanner and the uh, either the control or verify applications is 19.9 for the license and the hardware. I'm not going to dwell too much on this. There are some there are some fine points as to why you would choose verify over control or vice versa. Um, it really depends on how many other how many other uh, data input devices you might have and what type of inspection you're really interested in doing. Um, in general, Verify is more complete tool set um, and will handle hybrid, hybrid inspection models, so hybrid data inputs, things like probe-based inspection as well. Um, control is really more positioned for a full automated solution, so if you're doing, if, if capture is going to be your only input device and you are uh, got a workflow where you want quick inspection of a 3D printed part, then I would I would uh, urge you to look more closely at control. Uh, both packages are priced the same, um, so there's there's really the only reason to choose one or the other is is based on the functionality that you need. I'm going to turn it over to Greg George here in just a minute, but I wanted I wanted to uh, say a couple things. Uh, to summarize, this is this is a big this is a big deal for us, especially for those of us who have worked in GeoMagic and RapidForm for a long time. We had uh, you know we had been exclusively software for for many years, uh, 15 years, um, and as a software partner to a lot of different and very good scanning companies, we had exposure to to a lot of different technologies. Um, uh, that generated both scan data and, and sparse inspection data. Um, the combination of our expertise not only went into the plugins and the software that you will see as part of this as part of this demonstration, but it it also went into selecting the technologies and the partners that we're using for the capture device itself. Um, when I say that I, you know, I believe the price and performance of this device is unparalleled in 3D scanning, I really mean it. I, uh, the, the, once you see the fidelity after this part, the, the capture device is capable of generating, I, I think you'll be very impressed uh, with the price and performance that we've, we've been able to create here. Um, by way of a, of a, tra so thank you, by the way, for for listening to my part, we're going to get to the more interesting bits right now. Uh, as a way to transition between the two, we're going to we're going to post a a poll question that will ask you about what type of of CAD systems you're using. Um, uh, please answer this if you can. It will help us kind of set direction in terms of of where we're going um, in the future. And then after that poll question is done. Uh, you will see Greg George, my very talented colleague, who will walk through a, a demonstration of Capture for SolidWorks. So, again, thanks for your attendance, and I hope you're hope you're as excited about this as we are. Hello, my name is Greg George. I'm a product specialist here with uh, the Three Systems Group, and today I'm really excited to give a live demonstration of a groundbreaking technology that we've released um, recently. Uh, so today I'm going to demonstrate the world's first scan-based design workflow that 
that runs inside of SolidWorks. So you can see why we're really excited because it's really the first product of its kind out in the marketplace, and it's awful also offered under $15,000, so, so we're really excited about that. So again, to reiterate what Len uh, talked about earlier, um, Capture for SolidWorks is, is two components, a software component and a hardware component. So as you can see here on my, on my desk, that I have a, a, uh, a scanner, a blue light scanner, and it comes with everything that you see here, uh, a tripod, um, it comes with targets, and it comes with a the cord and power supply, and it runs uh, off of Ethernet, so that, that runs around the back side of my uh, machine here. And it also comes with the, the plug-in for SolidWorks. Um, a little bit about the scanner. Um, it has one megapixel cameras, so it's about a million points per shot. Um, it takes about 0.3 seconds. To, to scan each individual shot. The resolution is around 6,000. So when I say resolution, I'm talking about the distance between the points. Um, if you were to scan apart and measure the distance between the pixels, it's about 6,000 apart. The accuracy, um, as Len talked about before, just to give it in another way, the accuracy is around two to five thousandths. Um, and everything that you see comes here in, in the box. So why don't we uh, go ahead and create a scan. I have a part here. It's a legacy part uh, from a customer. And we'll just reposition the camera so you can see a little bit better. So can everyone see my, uh, my screen and my webcam now? Looks like everything is there. So as you can see here on the desktop, I have the uh, flange part. And this is an instance where a manufacturer did not have a CAD model or a uh, drawing of this part. And um, with this plugin, we'll have the ability to scan the data directly inside of SolidWorks and then design based off the real life data and create a CAD model. So in order to do that, <clears throat> I'll just show you what, um, what's different in my version of SOLIDWORKS here that we installed. Um, you see right here that I have Geomagic Capture, a tab right here on the end. This is the software that we've uh, installed on top of SOLIDWORKS. And uh, we pretty much always organize our software here with the left to right workflow. So you can see at the beginning that I'm going to connect to the scanner and then I can scan. So I'll go ahead and just click on scan, and you see that it pops up with a preview window on my screen. And we have a few different options in here. Um, I can adjust the exposure of the scanner, and I can even change the different types of alignments that I want to do. Today I'm going to use the, the targets that, again, come with the scanner. Um, but we do have this best fit alignment as well. And this isn't the traditional best fit alignment. It's kind of what I like to call like an interactive alignment. It'll actually align to my last shot. So if I take a shot and then move it and take another one without targets, it'll snap to the other one and work its way around. And in this, in this demonstration, I'm going to show how we integrate with the, uh, the sticker targets. And we do recognize different styles of, of, of sticker targets on the part. So all I have to do, you know, all my settings are set up, is, is click Scan. And the first time it takes it a second to, uh, to connect and scan, you see here's the status at the bottom. So it says it's scanning right now. And then as soon as it's finished, that data will pop up here on the screen. And you'll see a green point cloud. So if I zoom in and look at it, you see the detail that we're dealing with. So that is just one capture. And the nice thing about the targets here, again, is I can, I can just grab the part and move it. And then I can take a second shot. And uh, because I moved it in this direction, you should see this data now come in aligned to the first shot. So you'll see it pop up right there. And the interesting thing is I can actually keep moving the part around 
even though um, it's scanning. So if I move this and take another shot and hit scan, if I click over here, I can I can manipulate the part a little bit and figure out maybe plan out my next shot. And then by the time I'm done that, you can see that it'll it'll pop up here more scan data on the screen. So again, th this is a point cloud on the screen right now. And, and what we're going to do from here is we give you all the other tools to manipulate the scan data. So I can crop the point cloud and um, use only the data that I want. Because you can see that it collects the holes on the, on the surface of this, of this table here. But if I, if I just click OK and I'm finished scanning, I can come in and edit these point clouds. And I can use a variety of point cloud tools, uh, maybe realign the object, and then I can merge it into a polygon object. So for those of you um, that haven't dealt with a scanner and scan-based design workflow before, um, I'm going to jump ahead here in a second and to a polygon object. But before I do that, I just want to explain what's happening. So the, this is a point cloud object. When I run this merge tool, it'll actually take all the shots and merge them into one polygon object, which is a triangle object, and it's a surface. It allows me to create selections easier and, and uh, select areas of the part and fit geometry to it in, a, in an easier fashion. So I'll go ahead and close this, this part. I'm going to turn off my webcam so you can see a full-sized view of the, the screen. So this is what a polygon object looks like inside of Capture for SolidWorks. And you can see this is unfamiliar if you've used SolidWorks for years, something that we really haven't been able to do much of. I can throw a, a polygon object inside of SolidWorks, but from there, what, what do I do? I don't really have many tools to manipulate the data and extract geometry that I need. So to start out, um, the first thing that I'll do is I'll do this uh, compute regions. So I'll select the mesh and populate the, the mesh here and say that I want to compute regions. And what this is doing for, for people that haven't um, dealt with our software before is it'll go through the polygon and highlight areas of high curvature. And high curvature areas are usually edges. And all it's doing is allowing me to create easier selections. Um, when I have a part like this, if I highlight the edges, it'll make it easier for me to say, I only want to select data from this region and maybe fit a cylinder or cone or whatever to that, to that data. So after that region command is finished, I'll go ahead and, and fit that outer extrusion to this flange. So if I come over here to the toolbar, I can say fit extrusion. And in this dialog here, I have a lot of different options. I'll explain some of them. The first one, I, I can select a region. And like I said before, if I click on this region, it automatically selects that whole area. And you see it immediately popped up with a preview for me. What we did there is the software knew that we wanted to create an extrusion. So it calculated a direction. It calculated a cross section and drew a sketch for me, and then calculated the distance for me automatically and put a preview on screen. Now, if I want to manipulate any of those attributes, I can. I can come over to the extrusion direction, and I can say, I want to align my extrusion with the top plane. You know, I want to create a, a real life, uh, I want to create it in the right direction, not necessarily where the real life part was going, because that is an imperfect part, right? So from there, I, um, I know that it's a drafted extrusion because I was looking at the part earlier. I can also change it to drafted extrusion. And it'll recalculate and apply a taper to it. And then I can also change where it starts and finishes here. So if I say, I want to extrude this up to a region, again, those regions come in handy when, inside of the tools. I can select a region on the bottom. And then I can select this region on the top, or even multiple regions. I can hold so control and select a couple of those regions. And then when I'm finished, I just hit the green OK or checkbox. And you see it does a bunch of things really fast. It went ahead and completed that command and created an extrusion for me. 
So you see here, if I turn off the polygon object, it created a solid for me. And just to show you that it is a, a parametric model, I can come in and go into the sketch, hit normal to, and zoom in. You see it drew the sketch automatically. Another thing that's interesting is it, it also gives me, it gives me the sketch that it drew. It also gives me a reference polyline of the intersection between the polygons and the, the plane there. So if I need guidance and I want to redraw a section of this, I have that that reference polyline available to me to redraw it and make changes to that design. So let's go ahead and model a few more parts of this. I'll go ahead and turn my solid off and my mesh back on. I'll just turn the mesh right back on here. And let's say that we want to um, model these two pockets. One way to do that would be to, to come in and fit a, uh, a cylinder. So I'll select a cylinder. And again, just like before, I can constrain the direction. So it's in an absolute direction the way I want it to go. And then I can come in and say, I want the second direction to go up to this region. And then on the other one, I can just drag it up because we're going to do an extrude cut this time. So there's the preview of what's going to happen. If I click over and turn on my solid, I can go ahead and hit the OK button, and you'll see that not this time, instead of creating geometry, it's going to cut it away in this option here. So I'll hit the OK button, and then it'll cut away from that solid. Right? So we just created that pocket really quickly. And again, just like before, if I want to make any changes to it, the, how far it extrudes and things like that, I'll just come into the feature and make changes to the history. Normally, if I wanted to uh, move this to the other side, I would create a, a circular array around the center and, and then pattern it to the other side. But because I want to highlight a few different tools, I'll turn off the solid and I'll show a different way of modeling this pocket over here. Um, a few tools that we have that are really interesting is I have the ability to fit a freeform shape to the polygon as well. And that's very interesting because I can scan a, an organic shape and select that geometry and allow our fitters to come in and create a, a surface. And you'll see the preview pop up here in a second. So we just fit a freeform shape through that data that's there. And what it's going to do is it's going to fit it as a boundary surface inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I can edit it in any way that I want to, just like I drew it from scratch, except for we were able to quickly extract it from the mesh. So I'm going to hit OK there. And you see there, if, if, you're, if the connection is fast enough, you're able to see the software quickly draw those, um, the ribs, and then create the boundary surface for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and fit a plane to this section. And again, I'll just remind you, this isn't the way I would typically model it, but this does highlight some really powerful tools that aren't in SOLIDWORKS otherwise. So you see I have both of those surfaces. And from here, I'll come in and use the basic SOLIDWORKS tools to do a trim mutual between the two. So I'll select those two surfaces, and then I'll select what I want to keep. And then I'll turn my solid back on. And then I'll do just a, a typical surface cut away. And then I'll go ahead and turn that so, uh, surface off. So you see I was able to model um, the part in, with two different methods. And again, the whole time using the, the scan data underlying to help me fit. So the next step, I'll go ahead and model a couple other things so you can see you know, how I would approach the, the part in different ways. Um, the center area is tapered, so I'll, I can uh, model a cone there, come in, select the geometry, again constrain the, uh, the direction to the top plane again, uh, turn my solid on so I can see it cut away. You see it's uh, set to cut right here. It'll cut the cone away from the solid. And you see how easy that was. And again, if I need to constrain it in different ways, I just come back over, 
make changes to the sketch, apply relations, constraints to it after the fact. Um, another really neat tool that we have is, you know, all the tools that I've used so far have been the automatic tools, right? Like an extrusion, um, cylinder, plane, freeform. What if I want to manually draw a cross section? Um, I'm going to use the right plane and intersect it with the polygon and then draw that O-ring groove manually just to show that uh, the functionality. You know, I could I could do a revolve cut there, but why not um, highlight a tool um, called the cross section tool? So I can come in and, and select that plane, and you see it creates a preview for me on screen. And there's an option here at the bottom that says uh, to give me the polyline only, which is the intersection between the polygon and the plane, or I can tell it to automatically sketch for me, so it'll sketch a line arc, and I can set some settings there, or I can tell it to give me a spline. So maybe I'm intersecting it through an organic shape. So if I go ahead and tell it that I want to give me a polygon, uh, polyline, I hit that, and it'll give me a sketch here, and I can hide my, my polygon. You can see here, let me go ahead and recreate that real quick. I'll turn my, turn my mesh back on, come in and select the right plane. Oops. Come in and select the right plane. Hit OK. I think I had a region selected before on accident. So that's, that's what I'm looking for right there. I'll go ahead and turn off my polygon. And you see that I have a reference polyline created by the intersection between the polygon and the plane. Now I can come in and edit that sketch, go normal to, and just draw manually that O-ring groove. So if I come in here and just grab the, the rectangle tool, um, many of you guys already know how to use SOLIDWORKS, so I'm not going to sit and create relations and, and dimension the part properly. I'll just go ahead and create the geometry by eye here. But you can see how it's very easy to go ahead and throw um, dimensions on the part and constrain it properly with the right design design standards. But all I got to do is draw those two O-ring grooves. I'll do both of them and then throw my center line in. And I'll just get out of the sketch and come over and I'll turn my solid on and do a revolve cut select that sketch. So I just created a manual cross section and drew it. That gives you the ability, right, to, to bring in any polygon and intersect and draw um, cross sections and model, model the part that way. So one last thing, I'll go ahead and um, turn off my solid. We'll fit a couple of these holes. One trick that I like to use for these uh, two bolt holes is come over and uh, I can use cylinders, but I like to go ahead and do them as one extrusion. So if I hold the shift tool, I can fit them both as one extrusion and then drag these so they completely intersect the part and turn on my solid and then see that, make sure that it defaults to the cut command and hit OK there and it cuts those two away. So you see, I created a design from the real-life scanned part. Um, one of the biggest benefits that people often overlook about this process is they may want to just jump to manufacturing, right? Well, why don't we check to make sure that, you know, and see how close that we follow to the track to the polygon. So if I, if I come over here, I have a deviation analysis tool. And in here, I can select the polygon and then the solid and calculate a 3D comparison or a deviation analysis between the part and the CAD model that I just created. So what this does is closes the loop. I can make sure that, one, I modeled the entire part. I can identify areas, you know, like this right here. I know from looking at the part that somebody ground off the edge. So you can make design decisions here 
based on the color comparison. You can see I missed that whole area. I didn't do the O-ring for it. And um, the top surface is warped, you can see. And I modeled it flat. The, the top and bottom are parallel. But this is where I can make the design decisions. Do I need to go back and make changes to my model? Or is this within the tolerance that I want? You know, so this is really a, a huge benefit of the scan based design workflow is the ability to go all the way back and figure out how close we were to the original design. So that's an overview of the whole workflow. I will point out that today I scanned using the capture um, scanner, but I do have the ability in here to connect to other devices. We have plugins in here, and I can hard probe inside of the software, um, and I can connect to a, a variety of other scanners as well. Um, I think now is a good time for questions and answers. So if you guys um, have submitted them, um, Tom Simon will, will go ahead and, and read a few out and we can answer them. Thank you, Greg. Um, everyone, we have a quick poll for you to uh, answer and then we'll go ahead and jump into the Q&A. So just a few more seconds. We appreciate the responses. Okay, thank you again for responding to our poll. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Q&A now, and I'm going to uh, open up the microphones on our end um, for a few people to answer in case we need them. Uh, we'll bring Len Chamberlain back in uh, as well to this Q&A session. So uh, from the start here, what other CAD systems will such plugins become available for? So we're, we're not allowed to talk about our product roadmap in specifics. We are looking at other uh, CAD systems, so, they're, so, so I wouldn't be surprised when you see uh, more systems supported, um, but right now I, we, we're not going to talk about specific the, the next the next version specifically. It's the whole publicly traded company thing. <laughs> um, so uh, I think we agree that the scan accuracy on this was, was really nice. The threads look great. Um, somebody wanted to know what what how accurate are the threads in this scan? Um, you know, are they as, as accurate as typical scanners, or uh, could you give a little input, maybe Greg, into into the accuracy of these threads? I think I think I show I show Greg is still muted, so. Oh, Greg's back. Oh, Sorry, Greg. Hilarious. Thank you. The uh, it looks like it's a three eighths bolt here, so we were talking around two to five thousandths accuracy on a 3 8 bolt and it looks like as you guys saw before I can see the threads pretty accurately I don't know how to quantify that because it's not something that we even plan on right um, that's one thing it's a known thread most of the time so I don't have to know those for a design process but it is a really nice benefit to be able to see them and I could actually even cut a cross section through them and calculate what that is it does, it it is nice fidelity. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a very good scanner in terms of the, the feature, the level of feature it can pick up. And while we're while we're in the scanning, discussing scanning, we have it up. There's a question: What is the volume that can be scanned? That is one thing that I, I skipped over on accident. Um, the one way that I mention it is at at its biggest volume. Here, let me go ahead and turn the webcam on so you guys can see that. Are you guys able to see? Yep. Mm -hmm. What I like to say is horizontal at its biggest volume, it's about 8 inches. But, uh, vertical, it's about 6 inches. And it's about 7 inches deep at its largest volume, right? You can also, by the way, use the use the targets or use the overlapping surface data to scan parts that are larger than that. So if you, you're basically taking a, you know, a scan at a time and piecemealing together a larger part, but uh, 
certainly this was this was meant for kind of basketball size parts and smaller um, and, uh, and in a desktop environment but uh, you know every once in a while if you've got a if you've got uh, a larger part to handle you can do it with either the targets or the best fitting on multiple scans and uh, Greg can you review the um, dimensions again because there's a couple questions here and what's the maximum size of the part what are the dimensions so could you just walk through those one more time the the way I the way I described it is um, uh, the picture aspect ratio is like an eight inch by six inch by seven inch deep so if you imagine a cube that is eight by uh, six by seven deep but I would you know you could safely say like uh, six by six by six or you're going to be able to get everything inside of a shape that that size and of course you can walk around an object pretty easily as well especially with the targets um, that's their biggest benefit is the ability to to go around a larger sized volume um, with these and you can piece it together pretty well. Um, and are the targets necessary for scanning? No, we do have a best fit option. And when I say uh, best fit, I can scan them all and then align them later in here. Or we do have what I, I was kind of calling like an interactive fit. Um, I can turn off the target mode and what it'll do is if I take a shot from this orientation and then maybe move it 20 degrees and take another shot, if I have no targets, it'll actually, because they're already in close proximity to each other, those, those first two shots, it'll actually best fit those together, providing you have overlap between the two, right? Because the software has to have data in order to best fit them together. Uh, there was a question here, Alexer, um, in regards to uh, will it work with an integrated uh, turntable? The answer is yes. It does not. We do not provide that with the package, but a turntable could be used. Lee like Susan could be used in the event uh, that you would like to do that instead of hand rotating. Um, yes. And um, let me see. I'm just trying to get through There's a few more questions here about scan fidelity that I wanted to cover before we moved into some of the plug-in materials. Um, in terms of uh, edges, um, so people are interested in, you know. Sharp edges and things like that will will pick up these sharp edges uh, on parts extremely well, or is there a limitation there? So the this this particular technology was was targeted for for mechanical parts. So when when we when we built when we built this system, we we had in mind uh, you know desktop desktop basketball size parts and under that were mechanically uh, you know, that were prismatic in shape so that may have some freeform may have some prismatic shape so but we picked the technology for this device that does an excellent job of picking up those those prismatic features um, we know that you know many mechanical designs have them so so uh, I think you'll I think you'll be uh, very pleasantly surprised at how well this scanner picks up the sharp edges and and how you know I mean it's the whole system is targeted for mechanical design use uh, and, you, and an inspection of those similar same type of types of parts right and uh, the limitations Greg they still exist the same uh, with shiny parts as they do with most other scanners correct yeah so if if you have like a chrome part um, you you would have to coat it uh, with some sort of magnaflux or powder of some sort. Um, for parts that are um, have different surface finishes that aren't necessarily chrome, but maybe they're a little more difficult ones like darker shades, we do have a HDR high high dynamic range mode, which it does take um, a few seconds longer per shot. But what it does is it does a bracketing multiple exposure and merges those together. So you can increase um, the ability to scan darker objects with that type of mode. And we've had really good success with that so far. Um, folks, there's a number of questions in here about scanning. We're going to answer as many as we can. Um, however, after the webinar, there'll also be um, some of these will be answered offline. Uh, so. You know, if you don't get your answer here, rest assured we will get an answer to you. 
Uh, let's move a little bit towards the, um, the actual integration. So there's some questions here. Uh, how is the scan aligned to the origin, the origin shown? Uh, can you realign the scan to any origin? Yeah, really good question. We, uh, I didn't show that because that, that part is typically seen as like a more boring section to show. But we do have this tool called Orient Mesh. And what we do is just like we were doing before where we fit planes, lines, cones, and things like that, um, the Orient co Mesh command, what I can do is select um, planes and axes and points and things like that that are in the that are in the workspace already. So like the top plane, front plane, and things like that, and then best fit those to the mesh and match them up. So you could do um, what some people will call a 3-2-1 alignment. So if, if you have a very simple part, you can you can fit three planes and then tell the software that you want front plane, top plane, right plane to equal those, and it'll create a 3 2, one alignment to the origin. So that is in there. We made sure that is a critical part of the workflow. If you're going to accurately design from scan data, you need to make sure that the alignment is correct at the beginning. And uh, so, yeah, it's under this Orient Mesh command, and it's similar to our legacy products, but we've made a couple tweaks to make it easier to use. Um. See, so trying to find another one that was related to that. So hard to keep up. So many questions. I had a, I had a. When Greg said he forgot to say something, I forgot to say something during my presentation. The, so the capture for SolidWorks software, um, is is an application that we do not sell standalone. So, um, the capture for so, you know, as part of building this tipping point in terms of ease of use, price, and performance, we have, we have created this as a shrink wrap solution. So if, if people out there are interested in buying uh, the Capture for SolidWorks plugin, they should be aware that it comes with a scanner. Uh, so that, that $14,900 price includes a scanner as well as, as the software plugin. As Greg mentioned, the software plugin is capable of using scan data from a lot of different sources. We have uh, we have various plugins that are also supported in addition to our own capture scanner, but that is sold as a as a complete package. Uh, there's a question related to that: Is does the SolidWorks customer need premium to use this? Yes, it works with the standard version of SolidWorks. Um, a couple questions regarding calibration, Greg. Can you just Talk a little bit quickly about the calibration of the scanner or how to calibrate. It does come pre-calibrated. Um, I believe that there is a, there is a uh, sheet that you can use to recalibrate the scanner if you need to. Um, it is, I haven't yet had to do it on this one. Again, we're, we're a few months in using these. Um, it's uh, completely enclo enclosed in this aluminum housing. And I haven't had it come out yet. So um, the calibration process is pretty easily done, though. It has like a checkerboard that you can use and take different shots of it to uh, put it back in if you need to. Um, is it possible to align constructed features in scan data to specific datums uh, in an imported CAD model for inspection? So that's a great question for the January yes. <laughs> webinar, but Correct. yes, the Correct. short answer is yes. So the, there's a number of different, so Greg talked about just kind of a general mesh alignment in, in a design space, but once you get into inspection, you're going to talk about datum surfaces, you're going to talk about various alignments that are required for each given measurement, and both control and verify have those capabilities to take this data and, and do specific alignments that are required for inspection. And yeah, um, there'll be an email about that event uh, in the follow-up to this along with the recording of the actual webinar. Uh, are there limitations in thickness, i.e. able to scan a nylon part with 0.1 millimeter branches? The, the limitation there is going to be your accuracy and your resolution. So depending on the accuracy, which we've kind of stated as uh, 
between two and five thousandths, and then the resolution is the points in the middle of the volume are about six thousandths apart. So if you get near that resolution, then you're already you're close to the limits. And in those cases, we've had a pe couple of people bring us parts, and we've scanned them to see if we're able to get it or not. There are sometimes we're able to get those features and define them, and in, there are instances where it's just too fine for this type of technology. But it is pretty amazing that it's a it's a fifteen thousand dollar device that gets that close. It's a professional level. Um, can the plugin be shared via network, i.e., SolidWorks Volume License Manager? It can. So we, we've got network versions of this license as well as um, regular standalone activation codes. And if you're working in a group, um, we also offer a package that has five. SolidWorks plugins with a single unit scanner. So there is a there is a five pack version of the SolidWorks uh, Capture for SolidWorks uh, package um, that's only ten thousand dollars more. So you you basically get uh, for another ten thousand um, dollars four more seats of the plugin, um, and, and you can then share the scanner amongst the group since the scanners. Um, Ethernet based that you can actually activate it from multiple computers as well. Okay. Uh, if the object is larger than the scan envelope of stationary surface, is it possible to move the scanner, not the part? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And somebody asked if you could just explain a little bit about um, a little bit about the advantage to blue light technology. What makes this exciting? So the so the there are very, for those of you who are familiar with scanning, you'll, you'll know that there have been a number of different wavelengths of light tried as, as uh, scanning technology has matured. Um, the reason that a number of people have, uh, and a number of suppliers have focused on blue light is that uh, it's a wavelength of light that gives uh, better data on shiny parts and gives you a broader range of uh, of colors less interfered with by office light and natural light as well. So um, the reason that's the reason that blue light is used. And um, Greg, how did how did you center the part to the coordinate system? What was the the process there to get that lined up? The method that I used is I uh, calculated inside of the uh, orient mesh command. I calculated a cylinder axis of the center, or actually a cone axis of the, the middle, and then I calculated a plane on the top of the part, and I didn't worry about how it was indexed, so I partially constrained it, um, but you could easily use the bolt holes axes and then create like a center line down the middle to index it around that origin, but that's how I did it. I, I used the center axis as my primary and then the plane as my secondary to align it to the world that way. Len, this one's kind of more towards you. Um, people have a number of questions asking, can you go over pricing one more time, um, touch a little bit on how much yearly maintenance is, and also tell, talk a little bit about training? Sure. So the... Um, sorry. So the, the base price for, for Capture for SolidWorks is fourteen nine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give U.S. pricing here. Um, but for fourteen nine, you get the hardware that that little tripod, desktop tripod that you see, um, the plugin itself, uh, as well as 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 well as the, the you know associated cabling and targets, etc. I'm actually pulling up pricing it. Rest of my pricing info as I speak here, um, just so that I'm. So that I'm aware. Of course, I can't find it right now. Let's shoot. Let's go. Let me. Let me hit a different question. I'll come back to that one as soon as I have this pulled up, so I don't give people wrong numbers. I'm still, still a little fresh on this. Sure. Um, if 
find a good one here. Um, can you bring scan data from another source as an STL, Greg? Yes. Uh, right here on, on the very left-hand side, I have an import option there. So I can import scan data in that way. And if I get out of the, the dialog there, you can see if I go to open, we added two groups, or maybe three groups down here. I, I can import point clouds in the various formats, polygon meshes in various formats you see there, and, and gridded points in various formats as well. So yeah, the OBJ PLY STL, the, the standard three, um, those all can be imported and used, so if they come from another source. So I did find my price list, Yahoo. Um, so Capture for SolidWorks is fourteen nine. The the maintenance, the annual maintenance is thirty seven hundred. Um, and again, I mentioned there was a five pack for Capture for SolidWorks at twenty four nine, and the annual maintenance for a five user system is five thousand. Uh, the the uh, training classes really have not been defined yet, and, and our experience thus far is that they're not really required. If, you're, if you are a good, if you're already familiar with the SOLIDWORKS environment, we think you're going to pick this up in about an hour or two hours. Um, so it's a very, and we ha we've had, by the way, very similar experiences with, uh, with the launch of our previous plugin, which was the, for Space Claim Engineer. Um, engineers and designers that were already familiar with that CAD package showed us how to use it <laughs> in terms of, uh, I mean, came up with really creative ideas as to how to incorporate scan data and how to use our tools in, in new design workflows. So um, we believe that if you're familiar with the SOLIDWORKS package that you're not going to require training on this application. And about and while you're talking about that, is there a ability to have a floating license for this plugin as well? There is. So, so the different. So the 14.9 price is for a node locked version. If you if you want a a floating license, it's an additional 30 percent both on the license cost and on annual maintenance. So, at, you know, multiply the price by 1.3 if you're looking at floating licenses. So again, folks, uh, we got a lot of questions, and thank you very much for all of them. For the ones we don't answer here, uh, if they're inspection related, we plan to have an inspection webinar uh, next month um, on the 16th. And we'll be sending emails out about that. There'll also be another one the following week about geometric capture for Design X. So we'll be covering two additional products uh, early next year, um, and all other questions. We will get to as quickly as possible offline. I think the, the last question I want to leave with Len is, um, how does somebody get to see this? How do they get to get a demo and, and check out the product? So um, the best way is to contact uh, contact us at uh, sales, sales at geomagic, I'm sorry, sales.geomagic at 3dsystems.com. Um, you can also make an inquiry via the web page. Um, but we've got a large reseller network that is extraordinarily excited that's already uh, we've already begun um, shipping a number of demo kits out there so people so we've got a fairly large uh, network of folks who are who are familiar with this and are capable of demoing it so if you're if you're interested please let us know we'll get we'll get your information to the to the reseller that's closest to you and and uh, get a demo set up great well, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Greg and Len, for providing all the information. Um, for anyone asking, yes, a recording will be available for this webinar, and a follow-up email with that recording and the link for it will come out in the next couple days. Uh, and again, remember that early next year, we'll be hosting two additional webinars about this product. We thank you again for your time today, and uh, look forward to seeing you again on future webinars. So long. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.